Hello everyone. Welcome back from the coffee break from the Breaknet Awards. Uh, and I hope everyone's nice and relaxed now because we've had lots and lots of projects come at you very, very quickly. But now we've got a nice serene talk about cool music. Um, so we have Carol Manton and Joan Armitage sitting in the front row ready to tell us all about Algo Rays and their part and what they do. Um, and I'd just like to invite them to the stage to tell us all about it. Hi everybody, I'm Joanne Armitage. I'm a lecturer in digital media at the University of Leeds. Um, I'm also a live coder and I'm involved quite heavily in the Algo Rave scene and we'll be doing a short snippet of slightly confused Algo Rave for you this afternoon. Um, so, in this presentation, we're just going to give you a quick overview and some pointers to some different places you can um, learn about Algo Rave. An Algo Rave is something that really kind of started in concert halls, at electroacoustic and computer music conferences, and then it's now sort of emerged into this multidisciplinary practice that has pockets of people doing it all around the world. Um, so there's a big scene in the UK, particularly in Yorkshire, where I'm based. Um, and there's also an equally big scene in Mexico, interestingly. So what is live coding? Now, when I'm on my own laptop, I have this ridiculous Excel spreadsheet where at the International Conference on Live Coding in 2015, we asked everybody who attended to define live coding. So we had lots of like philosophical ideas about like expression through algorithms in the moment. Um, this is the Wikipedia definition. Uh, live coding is a practice centered upon the use of improvised interactive programming. But also in that list, we had some people who registered for the wrong conference. <laughs> um, there was a fundamentalist um, Christian conference. <laughs> And we think, unless there's some slightly more spiritual members of our community, that live coding can't really def um, be defined as a practice um, of following God. <laughs> um, so live coding is the idea of using code as something performative, something playful. How would you define live coding, Coral? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I would say the same thing. It's about um, uh, using code to improvise and, and um, yeah, it's about liveness and, and um, probably removing some of the, um, uh, I guess, you know, electronic music can seem something quite, you know, it's done in a bedroom and then it's kind of performed later and it's, it's not something uh, seen, so it kind of removes that barrier, I guess. Totally. So the idea of an, an unravelling of technology, and you're kind of seeing this a little bit in like electronic music, in the work of people like Graham Dunning, who makes the mechanical uh, techno. So he's using something really physical, so like records spinning, um, to create like interactions and new sounds. So it's unravelling and exposing the processes behind um, a digital or a mechanical interaction. How do you live code? Well, we can't answer this in a 15-minute talk, but there's lots of um, support online. Well, if you know where to find it. Um, so in 2004, the earliest uh, people who called themselves, themselves live coders uh, founded the Temporary Organization for the Promotion of Live Audiovisual Programming. But they have various other renditions of that. Uh, Ps are quite uh, replaceable in computer programming. Um, so this website holds a host of um, different uh, content. It, it has information on upcoming events. It has information on languages. Um, and it has um, some kind of Wikipedias and startup guides. So it's a really good first port of call if you're interested in learning a little bit more about live coding and its tools. So here are a number of um, programming environments for live coding. I actually have only got one that uses visuals. Sorry, Coral, on this slide. Um, so the first one in the top corner is Tidal, which was written by um, Alex McLean. And he's one of the founders of the Algo Rave movement that we'll be talking a bit about today. Um, the middle one is Foxdot, developed by a colleague at Leeds, uh, based uh, in Python. Uh, Tidal's in Haskell. So 
that's quite a nice language because a lot of people who are maybe um, new to creating electronic music but um, have experience of programming have used Python. Um, the language on the right, this is, that's the symbol for super collider, which is a, quite a historic um, sound programming language that I'll be using today. So you'll see some super collider live in action and a few other examples here. Um, Jib is quite interesting because that's a web-based language, so you can co live code in your browser. Who live codes? Well, Coral and I live code. <laughs> um, but we have a range of um, different uh, people from different backgrounds and little sub-communities uh, forming. One thing that um, I've been working on, and Coral also, is using um, live coding and the intersection of computer science, electronic music, and digital cultures as a way of engaging uh, broader participation um, in uh, the field. Um, so I've run workshops at the National Media Museum, now the Science and Media Museum in Bradford, um, working with um, underrepresented groups at the museum to teach them basic programming. Uh, we've also had a lot of uh, women-only workshops um, using that as an environment to explore and fail at programming. And one thing we've really um, focused upon is the fact that this is a practice based on failure. Many of the early live coders would perform until their software crashed. Things were unstable, things were breaking. And actually, it's got a bit sleeker in the last few years. Um, so I say that now and I'll suffer a terrible crash this afternoon. Um, do you have anything to add? To that. I, th I think it, from the point of view of uh, women in live code, one of the things I find really interesting about sort of a female experience of technology is when in a, in a male orientated environment, there's often a certain amount of competition and uh, maybe women aren't prepared to step forward. Women are more scared to make mistakes. They look for perfection. Whereas live code, because um, you will make mistakes, things will crash, things will go wrong. But in those moments when things go wrong, sometimes, you know, beautiful things happen. It's, it's a chance to kind of, um, I, think it, I think it speaks of a bravery, a bravery of sort of women in technology. I think it's quite a, yeah exciting place for females at the moment. And uh, I would say, you know, two females here now representing the live code community. But um, in other digital technology communities that, you know, I think we're both involved in, there's generally more men. And in Algorave, it's, 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 it's a really, I know, collaborative space for men and women, which yeah. is nice. Um, so Algorave is um, the, the space where live coders are allowed to go out and play. Um, Algoraves have happened all across the world, from um, actual raves in Melbourne to um, Morelia in Mexico, across to Japan, then to Europe, then to the UK. It's an international practice with nodes of um, uh, nodes around the world under the top lap, the temporary organization for the pro promotion of live algorithmic programming banner. So what happens at an algo rave? Well, I don't think I've loaded the video, so I can't really show you, but you'll get a flavor of it shortly. We'll see. Um, so at an algo rave, live coders come together and project sound and um, project their code, creating sound and visuals. Um, this can work, this can be wonderful, it can be terrifying, it can, it can be silent at points. <laughs> um, but it's really about um, providing a space for programmers and live coders to um, come together and share their sounds with the world. And slowly but surely, we're gathering momentum. I've got a slide to prove it with some press. Um, and there's some algo raves coming up that I'll talk about uh, later on. So the algo rave was a term that um, was developed in, well, I say developed. Algo rave was a joke that started in 2009 between two um, computer, mu computer musicians, Nicholas Collins and Alex McLean. And it kind of caught on as some jokes do. Um, live coding also has an online streaming um, site called Euler Room. <laughs> 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 
And most of these names were made up by 40-year-old men. Um, <laughs> um, so Euler Room is a space where uh, we stream our, our live shows. So you can find a YouTube channel um, and there's all sorts of sets, so it gets archived. Um, on Algo Rave's fifth birthday, um, at the start of this year, we um, did a 24-hour stream across four continents of continual algorithmic delights on the Euler Room YouTube channel. <clears throat> um, Algorave is an inherently collaborative space. The idea of using code is something that is participatory, something that's um, uh, social. And from this, lots of different collaborations have evolved. Here I have a picture of Matthew Yeeking, who's um, a lecturer at Goldsmiths, and he's playing drums in the band Canute. Um, and they're syncing with a regular click track. So he's hearing Alex's beat in his ear and then um, playing in time. Um, in the bottom picture that you can't see quite so well is um, someone programming a marimba player to play her marimba. So he said things like, if you're feeling happy, play this. And so that was quite a fun interactive performance. Um, live coders collaborate with each other Today, Coral and I are collaborating, and she'll be using my audio stream to generate her visuals. But I don't think I'm doing anything back, sorry. <laughs> um, so do you want to talk about visualists? Yeah, so um, I, think, I think what's nice with live code is because live code is sort of uh, a collaborative space and that you're kind of sharing your, your code with your, your, your audience. It's nice then within that uh, sort of space to have visuals as well. And the visuals are being live coded along with the uh, the music, and it's it is that kind of I guess answering each other with what you're doing, and it kind of makes I guess um, that club sort of atmosphere. Um, so live code visuals uh, are generally done in uh, I think Cyril is used quite a lot. If you want to look that one up online. Uh, I'm a colleague of mine, Antonio Roberts, who uses uh, Pure Data. Um, today I'm going to be using Max MSP because um, I'm going to be using data from the British Library and image data, but normally I would use Cyril, which is um, a code uh, a language that's um, kind of reminds me a bit of Visual Basic like that, but it's got to be whatever code you're using, you need to be able to react quickly and you need to be able to improvise so it needs to be responsive and fast yeah. awesome oh. oh i keep on going for the wrong thing there we go working with data yeah. so i've missed the discussions this morning because of um, travel on the train <laughs> but coral informs me that we've there's been much discussion about using data in practice um and that's something that live coding really embraces um here at the bottom is a picture of me collaborating with um, Shelley Knotts at Melbourne University. And we were using um, live data from audience interactions to affect our sound in subtle ways. So for example, we had heart rate monitors that people could strap on and after a period of measures, it would adjust our tempo, nudge our tempo accordingly. Um, we also had accelerometers, so people could control a low-pass filter on our sound. So that would cut off higher frequencies and um, emphasize others. Um, so the idea of having, an having a coded performance is interactive, but we can also use this data live to control different parameters. I think as long as there's data coming in and out of the machine, we can adapt that and map it as we go. So we were playing with um, using some different mappings programming the software as we were performing. Yeah, and uh, the, the top image there is uh, an algorithm we, we both performed at, uh, which was organized by um, Joanne's uh, colleague uh, in the Algo Babes, Shelley. Um, and uh, we were using uh, m m data from the School of uh, Biochemistry in Newcastle. Yeah. And they were giving us protein string, string data. So I then put that data into Touch Designer. Um, and I kind of reimagined what a protein structure might look like um, for, for that event. Um, and today, uh, we're lucky to be using some of the British Library Labs data. I'm going to be taking some images of maps and kind of 
trying to play around with their topology a little bit using uh, audio. Um, but that's something, yeah, that we really in, enjoy doing is uh, finding ways to collaborate with uh, other groups and to find interesting data and new ways of approaching our code and our practice. Brilliant, yeah. I just thought I'll add to that that I'm, in, in the, I'm using some bird sounds and some fog sounds in my performance. From the sound from archives. From the sound archives. Um, so to prove that we're vaguely legitimate, here's some press. <laughs> There's actually been more recent press. I need to update these slides a bit. But there was quite a big feature in Mixmag, which is a big electronic music um, uh, uh, platform um, that kind of went through AlgoRave and did gave quite a detailed look at it. It might be interesting for anyone who's in wants to hear more about it in terms of like the club culture side. Um, this was an early Vice article. AlgoRave is the future of dance music if you're a nerd. Um, quickly, it was originally called, you can might be able to just about see in the URL, that it was originally called AlgoRave is the future of dance music if you're an HTML coder. <laughs> the AlgoRavers were quite quick to point out that no one live codes in HTML, so that was fixed. <laughs> <laughs> but we're about, we're doing things to prove that even more. Um, there's uh, the Algomec. So Algomec is a festival that takes place in Sheffield, and it's the festival of algorithmic and mechanical music, which I hope you agree is quite a wonderful idea. So there's all sorts of stuff from uh, one-woman bands to uh, textiles, all sorts of live mechanical weirdness. Last year there was clog dancing. Um, so there's an Algomec Algo Rave, which is held at Millennium Gallery, a wonderful gallery in Sheffield. And that's um, a, the, the, the Algo Rave itself is on the 11th of November, but there's also um, a, a events either side of that. Um, the next big date in the Live Coders calendar is ICLC, the International Conference on Live Coding, which will be in Morelia in Mexico, which is very exciting. I'm still waiting for my institution to see if I've got funding. Have you got anything else coming up? Um, no. <laughs> oh, no, I'm doing, we're doing uh, some, re well, I work um, at IDAT, which is a research and design collective out of Plymouth. We're using live um, performance in dome spaces. I did a residency earlier this year at SAT in Montreal and hopefully going to return and sort of, yeah, use some of the live performance methods I've been learning through live coding. So. Awesome. And that's it for now. We kept that short and sweet. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers.